Hi everybody and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. While this May is dominated by the new Zelda game coming out on the 12th, there are plenty interesting looking indie games out this month we think you'll want to take a look at. Here are the top 10 indie games we're most looking forward to seeing this May 2023. Up first and at number 10, Panorama, the delightful and soothing puzzle game is set to exit early access on May the 9th. Whilst it bears a striking resemblance to Dorf Romantic, let's call it a tribute rather than out and out copy. With its serene atmosphere and warm, buzzy visuals, coupled with a fantastic background score, Panorama is sure to provide a dreamy and relaxing experience for players, especially those who enjoyed its namesake. The game involves experimenting with various tile combinations in a city building format, complete with quests that can challenge you to construct specific structures. However, it is possible to disable this feature if you prefer to zone out and just play at your leisure. This comes out via Steam on May the 9th. Up next and at number 9, End of Lines is the new game from Nova Box, who you may remember from such games as Across the Grooves and Sears Isle. In keeping with their recent efforts, this is an interactive graphic novel that's inspired by the looming climate emergency. As you can see with the game's trailer, it's set to offer a hand-painted vision of what the future may hold if we collectively fail to deal with the rapidly changing climate. The game follows a group of people, survivors of the apocalypse, as they wander the devastated countryside of southern Europe. In keeping with the studio's back catalogue, you're able to decide how the story branches as you play, with the developers saying choice matters with you needing to manage your group's morale, where death can be encountered at any time. I was rather taken by Nova Box's last few games, and I'm hoping End of Lines delivers upon its premise of being a beautifully illustrated art book with a touching story. End of Lines is headed to PC and the Nintendo Switch on May the 25th. At number 8 and out already in early access on May the 5th, Swarm Grinder is another game in this month's rundown that checks so many of our boxes. An action roguelike, pixel art, procedurally generated levels, 100% this is something that we're going to be wanting to play. As could be expected with this type of game, there's plenty of characters to play, each with their own skill set and weaknesses, and plenty bosses to see away too. The game is expected to be in early access for between 6 and 9 months, with a team looking to spend the time tweaking the gameplay to enhance what they're calling player retention. In other words, to make this as unput downable as possible. Naturally, it's giving me vampire survivor kind of vibes, which is a good place for it to be. At number 7, and expected out on May the 11th, we have Death or Treat. I can't lie, this feels like an odd time of the year to launch something that looks perfectly suited for Halloween, and yet there we go. As you can see, this is a 2D action roguelite that's full of hack and slash gameplay. It puts me in mind of the ever-wonderful Hollow Knight and other games in the genre, such as Ori, and of course one of my favourite games of all time, Dead Cells. As the video goes up, there's a demo available from the game's Steam homepage, which gives a fine insight to what we can expect from the game when it comes out. The platforming feels to my fingers at least tight and finely balanced. There's also an excellent combat loop here with plenty of diverse villains to take down with your differing weapons and special abilities. I'm also a huge fan of the visuals, not just in terms of the characters and associated enemies, but also in the backgrounds and how everything all around you looks. I think I might have shortchanged Death or Treat with its position in this month's rundown, and I'm keen to know what you think. If you're going to pick this one up when it launches on May the 11th, please let us know down in the comments. Coming out on May the 30th, one of our most loved puzzle games of recent years gets a follow-up in the shape of Poly Bridge 3. There's a new open world campaign with more than 100 new levels and a sandbox mode for anyone who fancies designing their own levels for other players to try and beat. Sadly, there's very little B-roll, so all we have to show you at this point is this super short snippet of what I hope will be a puzzling delight. At number 5, we have Sunshine Shuffle. That's a narrative-driven poker game which sees you climb aboard the SS Sunshine to partake in a few games of poker with a cast of cute-looking animals. Although here there's one big catch. While you're on board to play poker and presumably take home the pot, 
Those playing were part of a bank heist that took place just over a decade ago. I'm looking forward to seeing how the story and events from that day are teased out over the course of the game, and naturally enough, how the poker mechanic fits in and adds to the underlying narrative. While things on board look wholesome enough, I'll be willing to wager there's something reasonably dark going on behind the scenes. All of this comes with an original Scar soundtrack, which is right up my alley, and I'll be looking to livestream this come launch on PC and the Nintendo Switch on May the 25th. At number 4, coming from the delightfully named Coco Cucumber, Ravenlock came out on May the 5th, with it bringing a little bit of happiness to our home here at Get Indie Gaming. This comes from the people who brought us Echo Generation. The premise is simple enough. You're tasked with travelling through three different areas, each brimming with cute voxel light type of art styles that's firmly in keeping with Coco Cucumber's other games. There's plenty of combat, which I personally found to be of an interesting and engaging nature, although one of the other members of our collective thought this aspect was the game's weakest point, given as it is at launch, you can use a technique that I'll not explain here that gives you a kind of invincibility, meaning you're able to cruise through the game without really taking too much damage. For some, I can see how people will find this combat overly simplistic, although for me, I focused on the whimsical tale rather than looking for anything as demanding as any other fantasy fighter you can probably reel off the tongue. That aside, there's plenty of things to do and a quest line that merges the longer you play. It's not a long game, I finished it within a single play one evening in around 4 or so hours. However, I find it utterly charming, and as a game I'm super happy to have discovered by a viewer's suggestion over on Twitter, where you can find me via the Get Indie Gaming username. Ravenlock is out now on PC and for the Xbox. At number 3, and already out on May the 1st, City of Beats is a cracker of a game with plenty of things to get people excited. Firstly, that's how it looks. I'm a sucker for these sort of isometric battlers, and I really appreciate what the team have done with the colours and overall design. It's also a roguelike with rhythm elements, and one that uses a simple but effective upgrade path that reminds me of FTL or Hades, or many others of the genre where you can choose which upgrade path to take in any given run. Sure, it's probably not reinventing the wheel, although everything in this feels solidly implemented. I'm also impressed with the game's overall tone in terms of the writing. In places, it takes a few shots at players and the developers alike, and the jokes where they are feel well judged and hit more than they miss. The real highlight here, though, is the implementation of the rhythm sections that can offer a stern challenge. This is out now on PC, and if it ever comes to Switch, I think it would fly. Out on May the 3rd in Early Access, Tape to Tape has the hallmarks of something with a little bit of iteration could develop into something rather marvellous. It's a roguelike ice hockey game that's sure to appeal to both fans of the sport and those who are simply looking for something new and exciting in the genre. Now, I haven't played a hockey game in years, probably not since back to the EA franchise on the Mega Drive, which is going back somewhat. However, this caught my eye not for the hockey-based mechanics, but for the clever way the game plays Tribute to Slay the Spire, with it using a similar map of choices. All that said, there are a few issues here and there. The upgrade system could do with being looked at as things stand, I found earning enough what's called rubber feels a tad laborious, and I'd wager this is one aspect the devs will take a look at in future updates. Still, I've enjoyed Tape to Tape. It's great to see people doing different things within a genre that often goes down a similar route. Kudos to the developers, excellent rectangle. At number one for the indie games we're most looking forward to this May 2023, we have Planet of Lana. We've played the demo a few times over the past 12 or so months, the most recent being only a few weeks ago as part of the Steam Next Fest. Every time we've played it, it's left us wanting more. You see, I've never really been into companion-driven games such as this. I've said it before, I didn't enjoy Ico or The Last Guardian. I'm usually nonplussed with the companion's AI, which often leaves me frustrated, and yet here, I've experienced none of this. Your companion does what you ask it to do, and from my experience so far, doesn't get stuck or womble off of doing anything on its own. Puzzle-wise, our time with this one so far suggests it's not going to be a pushover. 
Some of the sections we've played needed some decent thinking time, which to be honest, I rather enjoy in my puzzlers. Then we have how all of this looks. There are plenty of painterly games out there, with many to follow later in the year, and yet I'm thinking Planet of Lana is up there with the best of them. The same holds for the music and sound effects, which add rich textures and ambiance to something I'm sure will be right up at the pointy end of our 2023 Game of the Year video come December. Planet of Lana comes out to PC and Xbox, including Xbox Game Pass, on May the 23rd. With Planet of Lana taking the top spot for this month, what are your picks of games you're most looking forward to play in May 2023? Do let us know down in the comments, and if you've liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. Many thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again in another indie video.